Hey everybody, it's Maggie. We are here in New York City at the Eva Scrivo Salon and we are here for balayage school. Here's my Eva right over there. And we were just having a little chit chat about the difference between balayage. I thought, well, balayage is hair painting. And she's like, no, 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 it's not. They're very different things. So I'm going to flip this around on Eva and she is going to explain the difference. It's very technical and this is good to know for when you're working with your clients so that you can explain to them. So I'm gonna flip this around and first of all, we are here. This is Eva's new salon. This is Fifth nice Avenue, view. New York City, Fifth Avenue right out there. Congratulations. <laughs> we love it. Yeah, this is a really nice salon, Eva. Congratulations. Thank you. It's nice to be on Fifth Avenue. I well, feel like yeah. some of the big boys now. Yeah, so your one salon's on Madison <laughs> Avenue and Fifth Avenue. So you have Good all addresses. The, the top places covered. I feel blessed. That's very cool. All right, so, so tell us what the difference is. Well, for all you balayage nerds out there, the more that you learn about this craft and the more that you break it down, the better you're going to be at it. So everyone thinks that hair painting and balayage are synonymous. Not true. Hair painting is when you paint both the top and the bottom of the hair strand. So very similar to how a foil is treated, a traditional foil, you apply the lightener uh, in your section and it expands and it sinks to the back side of it. So both pieces of hair, front and back, get lightened. When you hair paint, you actually paint the top and the bottom with your hands and you're moving the product through. So it can almost mimic a very soft foil. When you balayage the hair, you actually paint just the top side, the surface, only leaving the underside completely uh, the natural color of the hair. So what it happens is it acts as a built-in low light. So balayage is in inadvertently more dimensional and uh, shinier and beautiful because A, it's it's not top to bottom, it doesn't have the color all the way through the hair strand, it has more shine because it doesn't have the conductor of heat as foil does. And I also recommend all of you trying not to use heat with your balayage because it does make the bleach expand going from top to bottom and highlighting the entirety of the section. And in a true essential French traditional balayage, it's only the top side that gets lightened. Okay, so talk to us about saturation. When, when you and I were discussing it earlier, you just said there's a, it, a lot of it is about saturation. So. Absolutely. Saturation is so important. So if you want to have a really pale blonde, you might want to use more product. If somebody is already a level eight and you only want to go one shade lighter, you want to use a light saturation. So saturation is determined by the lightness and the overall color that you want to achieve and the amount of levels that you have to lighten. So how far do you have to go? You might use more bleach to get more lift. You, or you might just need a little bit of lift and use less product. Okay, so somebody was asking about hair painting can only be done in foils, and I'm going to have to ask you to speak up because somebody said they're having a little trouble hearing. So. <laughs> okay, so it's not just for foils. Now, foils are a great organizer when it comes to uh, using a lot of different colors. When we used to highlight and low light only with foils, it's great for corrective color, great for organizing. Um, what you can do, you can just paint the hair with your hands and maybe put a piece of cotton or plastic if you're afraid of it bleeding and touching other hair, but you do not need to use foil. Now remember, if you do use foil, you're going to get a lighter result. When we first did ombre, before we really understand that balayage was the perfect vehicle for ombre, we would put a little bit of foil at the bottom, right, to get lighter. So you don't need to do that, especially if you work with a thicker consistency and also so some clay-based lighteners, it'll also help you keep it from bleeding. Okay, so somebody was asking about very dark, resistant, coarse hair. What do yes. you advise? Yeah. Yes. You know, that is sometimes the hardest. Sometimes lightening more slowly will allow the cuticle of the hair to open more slowly and emit less orange and red tones. So what I like to do is sometimes use a clay-based lightener with a lower ammonia level. Now, depending on the lightness that you want to achieve, 
you want to use a different product. If I want a very bright blonde, I might grab Silk Lift by Goldwell, which I absolutely love, especially that you can add silk when you are mixing it. So the silk droppers that you add actually keep the consistency really creamy. Now the creamier the consistency, also the brighter and more beautiful the color. You can actually get clear, bright blondes depending on your consistency. Okay, so um, somebody was asking, I, I kind of got distracted because somebody was asking a very naughty question. Oh. It kind of throws me off. Not that kind of magazine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> and somehow they, they somehow end up finding us. Mm. So you guys, if you could just ask your questions again. Um, while they're coming up with their questions that... Uh, I did. I did block them. Somebody's saying, you know, block them. I did. Sorry. But, yeah. So um, tell us. Just I know. I, I, Eva said no. We don't have to talk about the academy, but I want to um, just Thank tell you. us about your academy. Well, we're one of the first salons to have a balayage academy where it is 100% our focus and we break down the science of balayage and the technical skill and the real essence of the art form and the history of balayage and how we can replace foils and produce bright, clear blondes. It's not just for ombre or sombre or a soft kiss of color. It basically can achieve any of the results that you're looking for. So our next class is March 7th and and I'm really excited to incorporate color correction and blonding theory into my new class. So. And how do you get? How do you find things on the class? You can go to evascrivo.com. You can go right to our academy page, and you can learn more about our classes and sign up. I look forward to seeing you. Okay, so back to the question. Somebody asked about what, what is clay, clay-based, um, a clay-based lightener. Well, clay-based lighteners have clay in them. There's a drying agent in them that actually keeps the product wet on the inside and dry on the outside. So one brand is called Artega, which I like very much. It comes in an array of strengths, and you can use 20, 30, 40 volume peroxide. It's an Italian color. It's, a, it's an excellent product. There's many clay-based lighteners on the market. So you have to think of what type of result do you want to achieve. Achieve. Platinum, um, Silk Lift, uh, these are other lighteners that we use. We use many different lighteners actually in the salon depending on the result. So somebody asked, how can you tell when it's finished doing its job? Well, you have to make notes, and on my client files, I have a file on each client. I have very specific notes, um, minutes, and, and everything is documented. These are things that I truly believe creates um, the best results and the best relationships when building a clientele. So maybe it's 15, maybe it's 30. You're going to have to rub away the exterior product and really look inside. You know, use a towel. Remember, things always look a little bit white and a little blonder when using clay-based lighteners because it's very thick and it actually affects the color so you might think it's lighter than it is so give it five more minutes if it's if you think it's ready and is it less damaging you know I have a theory about this some people like to use heat for five and you know then it's done or processing it for longer I actually like to process things longer and take my time it also allows for you to book your next client so the majority of hairdressers in the world we do cut and color and I'm one of the few that actually does both I think it's because I'm from Michigan I learned how to do both when I was growing up in the Midwest and it's something that I do here in New York so say I put my balayage on and I'm processing for you know a certain amount of time it gives me that enough time to actually book a haircut and book my next client while it's processing you know the thing I hate about foils is every five to ten minutes you are rinsing another section and you're running back and forth to the sink and you know you're going crazy checking and checking and checking this section checking that section and it's just so annoying so I really love balayage for the timing aspect. Alright last question because I know you have clients waiting for you. <laughs> Somebody wanted to know the difference between white bleach and blue bleach. Blue bleach. Ooh, that's enough. Wow. 
<laughs> well, white, be white bleach is very old-fashioned. Think of like BW2. It doesn't have any bluing agents to it, so it doesn't have any toning properties. Blue or violet being the opposite of gold or warmth in our hair. When you lighten the hair and the hair lightens in stages, some of that warmth emits and it comes out and the hair looks a little too yellow. Those blue-based blue bleaches, <laughs> it's very hard to say, um, really lighten and tone simultaneously. It's a benefit that I love about Goldwell Silk Lift, actually, because it's this beautiful pale blue. And blue uh, takes out orange uh, or yellow in the hair. So it really, sometimes you don't even have to tone with it. So it's great. We love and adore Eco Scribo. <laughs> this is, I'm going to show you again, here's Fifth Avenue, New I know, York nice City. View. Not all over. Look at you guys. Yellow cabs. I know. Lots of people. And then this <laughs> is the salon. This is where the academy is actually held. It's held in this space. Fifth Avenue, Eva Scrivo, how cool. Fifth Avenue. Thanks, Thank Maggie. Thank you so much for this time. Thanks, bye.